quote, but if you do not attain the secret of the fire by study, at least learn to render tartar volatile, so that by this means you may perfect your dissolutions, which, being its own homogeneous solution, it will leave us digested. Yet some of their powers have changed, which, having been introduced, they are remedies for many diseases." End quote. A treatise of the great antidote of Van Helmont, Paracelsus, and Crolius, by them called the Elixir Proprietatis, known by all physicians to be the greatest cordial and womanly medicine in the world for long and sound life, restoring nature even at the point of death, and effectually taking away the seeds of all diseases, and an examination of authors concerning its true preparation, as also a ready way to volatile salt of tartar by which this elixir is truly prepared, written by J.H., a lover of truth and made public for the good of all people. London, printed for the author, Anno 1668, to the reader. I have here shewed thee several ways to make the elixir proprietatis, by which thou mayest understand the difference betwixt a good and a bad. And for that end, I have set down Crolius his way of preparing it with oil of sulfur, which is that middle way that Van Helmont saith of being so made, it is of no worth. I have set down mineral the sayings of Van Helmont concerning volatile salt of tartar and its virtues being volatized, which is the only menstruum or dissolvent by which this medicine is truly made and doth give it the virtues thereof. I am of Paracelsus's mind that the age philosopher of a man is too little for the finding out of this. I have here expressed some few experiments, but could have done more and more considerable, as healing the leprosy, the scorbutifilous humor commonly called the evil two sorts of gouts the bringing forth the mercury of those that have salivated for the venereal disease, and many others too tedious to mention. If thou art ingenious, thou mayest profit thereby. Farewell. Since the fire from my house in Upper Shadwell, betwixt the new church and Ratliff, at the sign of John Baptista van Helmont, a 2JH John Baptista van Helmont in the 457 page saith, he will speak so far as the order of charity will permit, of the revealing of arcanums or secrets in medicines, First of all, nature hath by the goodness of God produced singular remedies in the vegetable monarchy, whereby diseases are singularly restored and cured, which hitherto for want of diligent searching, a covetous desire and envy of the devil have remained hidden. For so the elixir proprietatis of Paracelsus cureth the asthma, the falling sickness, apoplexy, palsy, atrophia, tabes, or consumption of the lungs. And because this elixir is not prepared but by a skillful philosopher, who not by thinking but by knowing is perfectly and doubtedly chosen thereunto, and so hath obtained the title of our adeptist. Therefore, out of compassion, I will unfold a middle way, our best myrrh, bright aloes, of the best saffron, of each one ounce. If thou take more, thou shalt find it done in vain. Let the two first be beaten, and the saffron roll it into a round figure, put them into a large glass with a long neck, and seal it hermetically and digest them in a gentle heat for fear of breaking the glass until you see the whole lump grow to the bottom of the glass and clear oil and water circulate in the sides of the glass, then open the glass and pour in a pint of cinnamon water and distill it in moist sand until no more will ascend. With this medicine, faith he, I have as well dissolved quart and eggs as continual fevers to those who overnight had taken the holy sacrament and received his sacrosanctum viaticum. And the extreme unction of oil hath had me guessed by his bed at dinner tabes or consumption of the lungs and because this elixir is not prepared but by a skillful philosopher who not by thinking but by knowing is perfectly and doubtedly chosen thereunto and so hath obtained the title of our adeptist therefore out of compassion i will unfold the middle way our best myrrh bright aloes of the best saffron of each one ounce if thou take more thou shalt find it done in vain let the two first be beaten and the saffron roll it into a round figure put them into a large glass with a long neck and seal it hermetically and digest them in a gentle heat for fear of breaking the glass until you see the whole lump grow to the bottom of the glass and clear oil and water circulate in the sides of the glass then open the glass and pour in a pint of cinnamon water and distill it in moist sand until no more will ascend with this medicine faith he i have as well dissolved quart and eggs as continual fevers to those who overnight had taken the holy sacrament and received his sacrosanctum viaticum and the extreme unction of oil hath had me guessed by his bed at dinner. Crolius in 250 page writes thus, our myrrh, aloes, saffron of each four ounces, powder them and pour on them so much alkalizate spirit of wine. As will reduce them into the form of paste, then pour in so much oil of sulfur made by a bell still as will color them black, then pour on spirit of wine tartarized as will cover them four fingers over. 
put them in a glass and digestion for two days, separate the tincture and pour on pure spirit of wine, circulate it two months, separate the tincture and distill the feces by a gentle heat. What comes over, add to the tinctures and it will be far better than the vulgar way distilled. For the virtues, he saith, it removes all obstructions of the lungs and chest pipes, prevents popular infection. And infectious airs and pestilential fevers removes all pestiferous humors in the stomach and bowels and eases all pains there. Takes away all obstructions of the brain, curing the vertigo, megrim, and dimness of sight, comforts the memory, prevents the palsy and gout, quickens the intellects and all the senses. Breaks the stone in the reins or bladder, comforts the heart and expels melancholy, eases the iliaco passio, and dollar of the ribs, carries away salt humors insensibly. And all surfeits from intemperance of diet or drinking, cures the third day ague and hectic fever, brings forth congealed blood, and speedily heals all inward ulcers and wounds, and saith he. All diseases proceeding either from heat or cold are by this medicine healed. Now thus far he. My way of preparing it is this. Are the best myrrh, bright aloes, of the best English saffron, of each four ounces. Beat the myrrh and aloes, but not the saffron. Put them into a bolt head. And pour on them a pint and a half of volatile salt of tartar, volatilized with spirit of wine. Digest them in a gentle heat till the gumminess be fully gone. And there remain no more bitterness than is contained in the saffron. Then separate the pure spirit from the feces and keep it for use. This elixir thus prepared will in color resemble the pure arterial blood of a sound and healthy man, and in taste will be fragrant, in which the myrrh and saffron will plainly appear very strong in taste, without any offensiveness or nauseousness, but grateful to the stomach. Now that I may not tantalize the reader in mentioning the virtues of volatile salt of tartar and not chewing the way to make it. Therefore, I shall express it as far as it is lawful, dot according. To Raymond Lully in his Testamenta Nova, take of red tartar, as much as is needed, calcine it till it be white, then dissolve it in spirit of wine. Twice its weight, such as will burn having gunpowder in it, till it fired the powder and continue feeding it three months, until the salt and spirit sublime together, then separate his phlegm, and keep it for use. This is that solvent which I prepare this elixir with, and which Van Helmont in his treatise of fever, 780 page. Quotiatum ad studius ignis arcanum, non pertinentis decide saltem tartari redder volatilum. Ute hujus medio vestres dissolutionis professietis qui es sua soluta anatis homogenea deserat digestis nobis. Ilorum tamen aliquot virus mutatus est quas intro. Deserte plurimorum morbrum dimitrises, which sounds thus in English. But if you do not attain the secret of the fire by study, at least learn to render tartar volatile, so that by this means you may perfect your dissolutions, which, being its own homogeneous solution, it will leave us digested. Yet some of their powers have changed, which, having been introduced, are remedies for many diseases. Or, if you cannot attain to that hidden fire, at least learn to make the salt of tartar volatile, that by it you may make your dissolutions of bodies which being truly homogeneal and although digested in us, yet it hath borrowed the virtues of the dissolved matter, which it contains to our principles as the subduer of most diseases. And in 787 page, Sufsit mihi quadil spiritus alcari et hisa corporibus in salem redactus volatilum and coglabulum in officinius stomachi ad nervum saborum redactus transit in meserica saltum perlotium. ESDAIC deportatus and transiendo lambat resolvaci sordas ibidem subnata sid exoticus sibia sumpta, saith he in English. It is sufficient for me that salt of tartar volatilized and reduced in the shop of the stomach unto the form of meats passeth into the mesaric veins or being conveyed thither by the urine. Doth cleanse all obnoxious humors there congealed, though they never so obstinately adhere to the vessels. Or, it is sufficient for me that the spirit of alkali reduced to a volatile and coagulable salt in these bodies, in the workshop of the stomach, reduced to the child, passes into the mesorag veins, or being carried there by the urine, licks and dissolves the filth there deposited with an exotic force assumed to itself. And in the 802 page, Natram esse morborum mediatrix im confortandum ideo non concernendum. Nature being the physicianess of diseases, she is to be strengthened and comforted and not hurt or hindered. Cyanum swords primus adherent lateribus insistendum resolutivis and abstersivis natura into satagente reliquum. Sui vero penetratori recessu aliquid pertinacius occultius grisiderit asumenda sant alcalia volatile acu instar saponis concta abstergunt. Saith he, in English, 
If foulness shall adhere to the first vessels, we may use cleansing medicines, nature safely doing the rest. But if stubborn obstructions shall secretly lodge in a more inward part, then volatile alkalies are to be made use. Or, for if foulness adheres to the first passages, it must be addressed with resolutive and cleansing agents. Nature is striving to remove the remainder. But if something more stubborn and more hidden resists in a deeper recess, volatile alkalies, which like soap, cleanse all, must be used of which wash away the causes of all diseases as soap washes linen. And in the same page, he saith, it's a wonder how much the salt of tartar will perform. For it scours all dreggishness of obstructing filths out of the veins and all collections of apostumes, and saith he, being made volatile with spirit of wine and not oil, is made good the saying of Paracelsus that wherever the spirit will not reach. Scarce any other spirit more powerfully shall come. This is part of the praise that Van Helmont and Paracelsus give of the volatile salt of tartar, which is the spirit by which this medicine is made by adding only myrrh, aloes, saffron, which Mr. Woodall in his chirurgeon's mate affirms that by these three ingredients without any preparation, he hath cured the tokens. Now if this spirit be so noble and enriched by these ingredients for this liquor by the help of the fire cleanses that is foul, digests that is virulent and inverts its malignity, and by means thereof is the virtue exalted and made more noble by a thousandfold. So that we have here a spirit not corrosive but familiar to the vegetal nature, the most noble of all dulcified salts made balsamical, and of a seminal virtue by its own spirit, by which the three species viz. Myrrh, aloes, saffron are opened, volatilized, and made spiritual. So that besides the fragrant spirit, there is also the substantial tincture, and all joined with such a salt that is friendly to nature, which by reason of its alkalizate nature, it is marvelous abstursive, resolving all mucus foulness, cutting and attenuating all tough phlegmatic coagulations which it finds in its passage, bringing them forth part by urine and sweat, and sometimes siege. This medicine thus prepared is that which I've had experience of for some years, for which I owe eternal thanks and praise to Almighty God. For had I not had this, though I have many others by which I have performed many excellent cures, yet for all them I had not been here to have writ this. For in the height of the sickness in August 1665, I was taken with a lethargy with that violence, that for the space of seven days I could take nothing but drink. My drink was sometimes sack and sometimes ale. Sometimes I was senseless for many hours together, and when I recovered my senses a little, I did still call for and took this medicine, and by God's blessing on it was perfectly cured, though it was reported with much confidence, that I was both dead and buried, and by no inconsiderable persons neither, and at the same time all my family was most dangerously ill. My son, a child of eight years old, was taken with an imposthumation in his neck near the jugular vein, which distemper he had two years before in the same place. When formerly coming out of the country, was taken with it the next day, and now, by reason of my illness, I could not so mind it, but that it came to a separation, and I being a little recovered was much troubled to see, but in short time brought forth the matter and healed it, and since he hath continued well. My daughter, of the age of ten, had a blain on her breast, but did not keep the house four days for it. My wife had a pestilential fever, but was cured of it in three or four days, though in the beginning of the fever, by taking this medicine, there came forth many fever spots, and the nurses seeing them, did conclude she had the tokens, and it was talked publicly abroad that I had cured her of the tokens, which thing I absolutely deny to be within the reach of any mortal man to cure the real tokens. Though there are many sorts of spots, not much unlike which are as easily cured as the disease they proceed from, as surfeit spots, purple, scurvy, or fever spots, and such like, but the tokens are. I am confident, Mark sent from God, and it is as impossible to cure any that once have them, as to contradict the divine decree, and besides my own family, many came to me both in my sickness, and before and after, so that there was not a day during the visitation, but from visited houses, and some that had running sores, came daily to me, which I no more refused. Then the soundest and healthiest bodies, nor shall not, God willing, upon a just occasion, nor to visit a friend or acquaintance in the greatest of dangers. For I have seen many that have had many sores and blains, some that have had the tokens and those that had risings. I always advise them to anoint the rising with oil of lilies and oil of March mallows, of each a like quantity. And if they broke, as some did, then to apply only that ointment called unguentum apostolorum, and any plaster, to keep the lint that the unguent was on to the sore, and to take daily this medicine inwardly, according as I shall afterward direct. So doing they have been perfectly cured by God's assistance in this medicine. 
and never troubled any chirurgeon, though sometimes there hath come out a large core. Neither is this medicine only for this disease, as the authors mention, and my own experience have found, for the greatest part of my practice hath been this many years. And is to this day, in those distempers which are by common physicians accounted uncurable, and I have wrought and still do on many other ingredients, both vegetables, minerals, and metals, and yet in all of them. I could never find neither so safe nor so speedily effectual a medicine as this one, which being of a solar nature that is cordial, that as the sun by his beams removes all fogs and vapors from the earth. So this medicine expels all venomous and obnoxious humors from the principal parts of the body, for it is so general a cleanser of the blood that had I not seen the effects, I should not have believed it. For I have applied it both to persons in pleurisies and quincies, and in one hour the party hath been left perfectly at ease going to sleep, and in his sleep hath been in a small sweat, and hath waked well, not losing one drop of blood as the common custom is. I have often cured a fever in two or three days. The smallpox, which is a rotted, putrid fever, I have cured in three days, the venom being breathed forth in a small gentle sweat, and the party perfectly well. And not any of the smallpox hath ever come to matter, though they have been before much swelled with them. The hectic fever, which will not admit of bleeding without death, is by this medicine suddenly cured. The convulsions I have frequently cured, even where there hath been no hopes of life, according to common reason, and I do myself. And advise all my friends to give of it to their children, first after they are born, six drops in a spoonful of ale, and I have had several that have given me thanks. And I always find the child the better for it for a long time. And if the mother of the child take it so soon as she is delivered, it will ease her of after pains and prevent the vapors of the mother. Being taken for a few days night and morning in sack, fasting one hour after, I have had many patients of the vapors and been long in the curing of them, though I used the best means I could devise. But since I have made use of this medicine for that sad, unquiet, restless distemper, I have found that a few days will cure it, except the party be old and have had it many years and then some longer time must be allowed and by God's blessing." you will not miss your expected desire. For the palsy, I have several times cured the worst sort of them, that is, the palsy in both sides, that in one side is but a trifle to the other, for in one there is but part of the brain obstructed, in the other it is all obstructed. The swimming in the head, which is a forerunner of melancholy, is presently by this medicine cured. Many are by reason of bruises, troubled with imposthumations in the head, which, after having taken this medicine, do cast forth much corrupt matter by the nose, and after become well. And sometimes the hearing is obstructed, and sometimes the sight grows dull by reason of a foul humor in the brain, which I find is much helped by this medicine. And although I have spirit of eyebright in the house, and essence of celandine, yet I prefer this medicine before both for the dimness of the eyes, which I, by much working in the fire and mineral fumes, cannot avoid the often receiving damage both to the eyes and brain. That disease called the tremor, I have cured in 14 days, when the shaking was so violent, that if you held the hand still, it would force the body to move. And one thing I am to inform those that are lovers of children, when a child in the month is froward, either by reason of some crudities it received from its mother's overmuch eating of fruit, or from hurt, or from bruise in the birth, or by reason of wind, send for some Dioscordium, saith the nurse. And that, saith she, is a harmless thing, and will bring it to sleep. And then the mother presently consents, though it proves the child's ruin, for though they do not give it so much, as contain so much opium, as to cause it never to wake again. Yet that little cold poison is the worst of poisons which will lodge in the body, till it either brings the convulsion fits, or if the child be so strong of nature to pass that danger, then after succeeds either the rickers or a weakness in the limbs, which one of knowledge many after repent when it is too late. I had rather any child of mine took mercury than half its weight in opium, for I can speak by experience of what I have seen in children whom I have seen after they were born, and what they are brought to by this error. There happens many times a windiness in the pleura, that is a skin within the ribs near the heart, which by delays proves dangerous, always coming with a difficulty of breathing, which is by this medicine removed presently, and by taking of it three or four days together, is fully cured. The windiness of the stomach is presently expelled by it. The scurvy, a disease seldom taken notice of by people till their teeth drop out, or a dropsy follows them, or the jaundies, and then what will they not do to be cured? They that have any of the three, or two of them, or all three, let them take this medicine, and it will rid them of their grief. But observe always, the more the disease is placated, the longer is required for it to continue the taking thereof. Always observe, fixed diseases require the longer for the removing, and are, for the most part, in less danger of death. 
the spleen causing either a pain in the side or sometimes sending up vapors into the head, causing unquiet sleep, makes those that are troubled therewith to be peevish, produces melancholy, it being the seat and receptacle of melancholy. He or she that takes this medicine shall find a pain and tearing near the spleen after an evacuation of much wind downward, the spleen being so near the hypochondriacs that seldom one is well, and the other obstructed but commonly both together. I had a patient near six years ago that was in a deep melancholy that if he saw anyone laugh would be very angry. Always he desired this medicine after he had once taken of it. Though he had others by, I have cured many melancholy people, but by the taking this medicine when the obstructions opened, he broke so much wind backwards that the neighbor at the next house wondered what noise that was, and after that he was cured in a little time. That disease the seamen call the belly ache, which in the West Indies kills so many brave men for want of help, had they with them but a small glass of this, they might be thereby preserved, for it would quickly remove that intolerable pain and send the cause forth at the back door. There is no medicine in the world will suit better with those that go long voyages to sea, especially into hot countries. For let them carry it to what part of the world they will, and keep the glass close stopped, it shall not lose anything of its virtues, for neither the heat of the summer nor the coldest frost that is will take any more impression on it than on a stone. That which will not preserve itself, cannot preserve another all sorts of fluxes, is by this medicine cured. Sometimes a looseness and vomiting is caused by reason of worms, which is always accompanied with much phlegm. This medicine breaks the bed of worms and leaves the patient fully recovered, though few but have there the strong fever, which is cured also. There is a disease which is called lupus phlegmaton, but by many foolishly taken for the dropsy, tympanies, the belly being swelled to a great bigness by reason of congealed phlegm. I had a gentlewoman of near 50 years in this distemper, and taking this medicine three weeks or a month, found little alteration, but then did begin to be loose. Voiding much phlegm, the next day she vomited and was loose, and the vomiting continued for two days, and every day came from her many basins full of phlegm, and at the end ceased both vomiting and looseness. Having voided that which was the cause of her distemper, during all the time of her illness, she still continued taking this medicine, and now happily rid of her disease. This medicine is both a great cleanser and strengthener of the spermatic vessels in men or women, thereby begetting fruitfulness in both sexes, for it doth search every corner of the body, and cast forth whatever is offensive to nature. The difficulty of making water doth arise from several causes, as from wind, from the stone, and from a slimy matter stirring that passage of the urine. And sometimes by a carnosity of the three first, I have had experience and find them easily helped by this medicine. The stone only desires a long time for the breaking, and yet I sent some five years ago this medicine to a person of quality. And in 14 days after they sent me word that it had so broken the stone, that there had come away two spoonfuls of sand every day for a long time. Now whether this was the stone in the kidneys or bladder, I know not. For the patient was a hundred miles from me, but this I do not question. But it will as well reach the bladder as the reins. For I once applied it to a person that had an ulcer in the neck of the bladder, a man of near fifty years old. There was a tumor betwixt the scrotum and the fundament, the botch being broke before I knew it, so that the urine came forth there every time he made water. And always in making water he had a great smarting in that place after, as well as before the irregular passage of the urine was stopped yet I could find no medicine that he found so much good by. But in short time he was by this perfectly cured, without the least obstruction in making water, although it brought away much mattery substance during the time anything of corruption remained there. The symptoms by which you may know the ulcer in the bladder, or the neck of the same, are a pricking pain after making water in the end of the yard in men, and in dot women. In the passage of urine, sometimes there comes away a mattery substance with the urine, sometimes like hairs will appear in urine, sometimes both, Sometimes a smarting in making water, and when there's nothing of the venereal disease, when these symptoms appear, then you may conclude there is an ulcer, either in the bladder, or in the neck of the same, and in outward egg sores, I have seen its effects are being taken inwardly without ever applying anything outwardly, but a scorched rag, the sores have run till the matter hath been fully taken away, and they have healed of their own accord, the patient taking this medicine daily, till they were fully healed, after I have continued well many years, and I question not, but most sores may be so healed. And the most venomous of ulcers, cancers, A and C, may be made by the taking of it more apt to heal, for as they do proceed from a venomous humor, so this medicine doth expel the greatest of venoms. For when I have been by accident in mineral fumes that will poison any man to continue in, I have taken no other antidote against them. The dropsy will fly before this medicine, for the liver being freed from obstructions in the urinary passage, 
Nature will do the rest, unless it be accompanied with a consumption, and then there is but small hopes of a cure. The piles, a distemper much following melancholy people, and oftentimes that sort called the blind piles, which always with a vehement pain and burning as though fire was in the place by the taking of this medicine. It doth much mitigate the pain, and by degrees takes it fully away, but doth not fully stop the bleeding piles, for that is the sink of the body, and would be much injurious. Ruptures called broken bellies, which proceed from wind or water, this medicine doth speedily take away. A rupture is a wind in the lower bowels, causing an extension of the peritoneum, and in men and boys the bowels extending the call, so that they fall into the scrotum or cod, and obstructions of the bowels being removed, the distemper hath no place to lurk in. But what need I spend so much time and paper in mentioning particulars, since there is no disease that I have met with, but this medicine will cure. For I find that the obstructions being opened, and the part strengthened, there can remain not anything of a disease in any part of the body. Now I shall direct how I always order the taking of it. My advice is to take it night and morning in a glass of sack and fast one hour after, but not longer. The quantity to a strong body, three score drops, to a child newborn, six drops, to one of a year old, 10 drops, of four years, 20, and to one of 12 years old, 40, always observing that some are as strong at six years as others at 10, and then the dose is to be according. Those that take it against infections need not take above 20 drops and only in the morning unless they go where infected people are, and then it is necessary to take it as often as they come where danger is. Sometimes it will be needful for those that have the infection and have had it a day or two before they take it for them, then to take it four time. As a day, in the morning, and at 10 before noon, and at 4 afternoon. And those that are taken either with pleurisy, quinesi, or any other paracute disease, let them take it so soon as the disease appears, and if the first dose doth not move it to their minds. Then let them take it again two hours after, always putting themselves into bed so soon as they have taken it, and if they be dry. Let them drink as much drink as they will in reason desire, but always I forbid them small beer, it being a crude quality requires the more concoction and so hinders the operation of the medicine. But those that are not lovers of strong beer, let them mix sack with their small beer, and they will. Find that the less quantity of drink will allay their dryness. Now word or two to my brother Tyro, let me advise thee when thou goest about any chemical preparation. First to learn to know the threefold salt in nature, the threefold sulfur, and the threefold mercury, and the sympathy and antipathy in them, their separation and union, and the cause of their not uniting. The degrees of heat and cold required for their putrefaction, understanding these, and then thou mayest be in hopes of accomplishing some part of thy desire, for if thou failest in any of them, thou wilt lose thy labor. A word to those that take this medicine. Before they take it, let them seriously consider whether they can have patience in fixed diseases to continue the taking of it, as in old settled griefs will be required. And if they cannot, I desire them to let it alone. If they will take it, then let them in the first place desire a blessing from God on it. And then questionless they shall obtain their desire, and having obtained their desire, let them return, thanks to God for it, always concluding, they that receive anything of good, and not giving thanks to God for it. Do but rob God. For order and diets, let the patient eat what is most agreeable to the stomach, always observing that the stomach better knows what will agree with it than the doctor doth, and let them long after the taking of it. Not walk abroad without eating, nor drink without eating. For perfume against infectious airs, I always had red saunders and rosemary of each a like quantity, and do approve it best, as the one comforting the heart, the other the brain. This medicine truly prepared, that neither the heat of the sun, nor the coldest frost, nor age can hurt it, is to be had at this author's house, at the sign of John Baptista Van Helmont in Upper Shadwell, near Ratchliffe, and Mr. Gavel's at the Falcon in Westminster Hall, and Mr. Playford's in the Temple, at the Tobacco Rowell and Spur and Turnstile in Holborn, at Mr. Joseph Neville's over against the Globe in Little Britain, at Mr. John Hancock's in Bishopsgate Street next door to the White Leon at Great St. Helens Gate, at Mr. Fleming's at the Lamb in Whitechapel near the church, at Mr. Stephen Keene's at the Sign of the Virginals in Glen Alley in St. Tully Street in Southwark, and at Mr. Constable's of Potter and Montague Close in Southwark. Each glass contains either one ounce or half an ounce. Finis.